Hey, yo, it is Carso, and today I'm here with Simply Basketball interviewing San Diego State Forward and San Leandro High alumni, Kashad Johnson. How have you been? Yes, sir. I'm good. Living the dream. <laughs> yep, we're in the practice facility right now. Super nice. Mm -hmm. I think the craziest part is the, the centers yeah. around. But we're going to like Kawhi over there, all the records, all the championships, you know, trying to add to that. Uh, you know how as, uh, the Clippers were here yeah. the other day? Uh -huh. Well, I came and showed up. Kawhi was one of the only players not here. Yeah. Got pictures with PG, Eric Bud, so everyone else. Uh -huh. But Kawhi and then Serge Ibaka ducked yeah. us. But it was cool anyway. So, overall, I want to just ask you, what is it like playing at a top D1 program in the country? What it's like playing here is just, like, I'm learning a lot. Uh, outside of basketball, the campus life is great, especially uh, COVID dying down a little more. Like, it's good to be live. Again. Yeah, it's so nice. <laughs> Getting back to normal. So, out of San Leandro High, born and raised in Oakland, right? Yeah. You know, growing up, how was that? Uh, growing up, life was, life, was, life was great. I learned a lot from living in Oakland, um, learned, learned, gained a lot of friends, you know. With that being said, came poverty and stuff like that, diversity, obstacles. Yeah, Oakland is beautiful. Oakland is the most beautiful city ever in the world. Mm -hmm. So it made me who I am to be today. So what made you start to, like, get into basketball? Was it family, friends, just playing around? Um, when I first started basketball, I was just playing around. What really made me take it serious was uh, I had an older brother who was playing basketball. My older brother, who ended up being the he was shot. He was a, a victim of gun violence and things like that. So um, he ended up surviving with the grace of God. And then like, from that, from that being, I just knew I was the chosen one. Me being the youngest out of six siblings. So I just knew it was my time to make it. So just that inspired you to really do it for not only your family, not only for you, but for the city. Yeah, for the city, too. So in, in high school, you racked up thousands of views on YouTube through mixtapes, picked up multiple college offers. When you picked up the SCSU offer, what was your initial reaction? My initial reaction, I was just, it was like about time. Like, you know, <laughs> I was ready. Like, uh, I was, I basically could say I was a late bloomer coming out of high school. I didn't really get as much recognition. So, um, like, once I first got my first offers, then SDSU came into the window. Then I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't really want to leave Cali. This is what I want. You know? So you knew when you received that, who'd you talk to? Who uh, told you? Uh, Coach J, Coach J Morris, who's now at USC. So when you initially got that offer, you were like, nobody else has to offer me. Just, were no, you it, instant? It wasn't like that. I, I didn't really have my mind set up at first because I was so new to the politics and things like that. So I was always wearing my options through everything. But over time, uh, SDSU, they showed the most consistency, the most love over and over and over again. So, so would you say the loyalty of SDSU and, like, how they really wanted you to be here is why you're here today? Yeah, they were very persistent with what they wanted in me. They showed me that they wanted me. They showed me what they can do for me. And it's the history, of, of course. That yeah. That, that played a big part. And a couple of other NorCal guys – Came down here. I know Dakari Allen yeah. from Sheldon, and then uh, Malik Pope. Yeah. So you now NorCal beats okay. San Diego. Yeah. So you commit to SCSU freshman year. You join a nationally ranked like the team was really good. Nothing like it. I agree. And you know, obviously, you're as a freshman, you might you you know you're not going to get the most minutes. Mm -hmm. So what did you find your role was as you went on? Uh, my role was to do anything to help the team win. Coming out as a freshman, I know, like, here at SDSU, we don't really fall into the politics play. Like, if you're good, you're good. If you got to learn, you got to learn. Things like that. So, with that being said, I learned from all the veterans. We went 30 and 2. When we, when we were, like, 22 and 0, like, we took over the map. We got yeah. the undefeated team at the end of the day. And then, um, so, with that being said, it was just, like, a, a dream, like, Watching all those guys play, the other guys, learning from them, learning experience, like, what I'm going to do. I'm not going to change yeah. that. We winning. Like, it's nothing I can really do. So Keep, that's just, how you build that, that camaraderie. Head down, working, learning every day. So that team was sixth in the nation at one point. Probably should have been higher, to be honest. 30-2. and All-time most winning team in SCSU history. So then COVID happens. 
and it's cut short. What was the team's reaction? The team's reaction, uh, Kobe, the world, Kobe messed up the whole world, but from a basketball standpoint, it was just like, it was a nightmare. You know, I keep saying it was a dream come true, but once Kobe hit, it was a nightmare. Like, we had senior guys that, that played the best yeah. that anybody can ever play, so they had to find out what their next step was going to be, and if we would have went to March Madness, you know, those guys probably would have been in a much hey. better situation than they are now, but, um, yeah. Uh, life, life goes on. COVID probably happened to take people through different obstacles and give them better opportunities. You know? Yeah, I mean, it sucks because then you got guys like Malachi Flynn ended up going to Lee. Obviously, that's the dream. But who knows? That team. Exactly. We, we had Malachi Flynn. We had Yanni Wessel went overseas. KJ Fagan, who G League. You know, Matt Mitchell, Jordan Shackle. They stock would have been boosted up. Oh, yeah. I mean, I remember watching the games and it was just like, this team is going to be special. Then you get the call. So you talked a little bit about, like, March Madness. What was the team's expectations as they were – as you guys were heading into March Madness? Um, but before March Madness, like, we always knew we was the best. Like, that, that year it was just something about that team, the camaraderie, and, like, Everybody was locked in with each other on and off the court. Um, even even during the games. It was a lot of games with that team. We went, we went into halftime being down, probably mm-hmm. about 15 or something like that. But like the the like the ego that we had together, it was just great. Like no nobody could stop us with that. Our defense was was impeccable. Uh, we if we was down, it was probably because we wasn't shooting well. And the only way you're gonna win if you're not shooting well is playing defense. So mm-hmm. we knew we could always win that, and we knew we had we had guys that could shoot the ball. So everybody gonna have that moment in the game. But can you can you like make me not be able to shoot for a full game? No. We mm-hmm. had NBA, we had pros, so we knew coming out of the second half out of all those games we was gonna win. There was never a game we went to that year where it felt like okay. We might be in trouble. No, mm-hmm. we never felt that way. So, if we was going to March Madness, we had our mind ready to win it all. Yeah, because, you know, they say the only thing that travels is defense. For sure. And you guys had that sure. one through five. So, then, sophomore year, your role starts to open up more. You guys uh, go 23 and five, rank 16th in the country. What was the biggest difference for you from your freshman to sophomore year? The biggest difference for me was I was getting more opportunities. I had to – I knew – I was being held accountable more. I had to take advantage of, of everything that was put in front of me. I had to be ready. I had to showcase all my hard work that I had the previous year, everything that I learned, and all those kind of things. My leadership role increased within the team. So you improved in every statistical category. Would you just attribute that to your hard work over the off season and working with the guys more and more? Uh, it's, it's, a statistic that shows hard work, a statistic that shows like more playing time, um, all of that, like, being more comfortable. Mm-hmm. That, that's the big key that was moving on during that time. So you had two amazing scoring games. You had 15 against Wyoming and 14 against Irvine. Just what does it mean to like you're out of the game and you're like, I just dropped 15 in a college game. What do you think about that? That's that's it's a great feeling afterwards. Like it's just like okay, I did it. I did it. Like, I can't dwell on that though. Don't get me wrong. Like one game at a time. So during the game, I, when I when that's going on, I don't really worry about it. Like I just thank God. Okay, I hit that shot. Thank God. Let's get to the next play. You know. And then uh, after the game, okay, I gotta show that I can do this over and over and over again, so I can make a living doing this. Um, we're not just always thinking about what's going on in the college. We're thinking about the next level. That's what I'm trying to get to. Um, but yeah, as college goes, I just want to keep producing just like that. I always show a glimpse, but consistency is what's going to get you there. So that's what I'm more about. Yeah, I mean, I was at the game the other night, and just you looked more aware of what was going on yeah. than even you did last year. Mm-hmm. And that's that's probably half that's half the game right there is just knowing where to be. Yeah. So last, last year you guys won the Mountain West Championship. What was your reaction to that and overall just the locker room's reaction? Uh, I don't want to say it was expected, but, like, we, we know we put in the most work. We know, like, our preparation with, with our coaches here at San Diego State, we got the best coaching staff in, in the country. Game preparation, can't nobody stop us. 
So we knew what was going uh, going on throughout the year. We knew all our obstacles. We had a tough preseason, so that prepared us for the regular season. Uh, we went into the regular season, game at the game, trying to work. We if we lost the game, we came back even harder. Um, going into the, uh, the playoffs, the uh, Mountain West Championship, we knew we had tough opponents, so. Like it was just, it was just, it was always preparation. That's what that's that's also how I about it. So we was always prepared to win it all. So then you guys head to Indy. Sore subject here, but just tell me, you guys fly over there. What is the mindset of the team? The mindset of the team fly over there, show every everybody what we made of. Like you know, West Coast, they don't, we don't really get too much love on the West Coast, so we gotta show we are the underdogs. Uh, matchup against Syracuse, favorable matchup at the time, but you know Syracuse always plays well. Yeah. <laughs> you know they're they're led by one of the best coaches in the country, and you guys knew what you guys were up against. And what was the game plan kind of going in? The game plan going in, uh, we knew they were going to zone us. Uh, we was trying to get into the middle, uh, trying to trying to break down their zone. But Syracuse, they did a good job of making all the adjustments to, to keep us from getting hot for, uh, outside the perimeter with our shooters. Um, so we just had to try to make an adjustment. It wasn't too much, thing, wasn't too much shots falling down, so we kind of had a rough night that night. Yeah. You guys are down 14 and a half. What is Coach telling you guys? Coach telling us just, just go out there and play. Play with a little bit more swagger. That's uh, Coach Dutch. Big, big time uh, saying, play with swagger. Like, don't be tense. Don't let the coaches get in your head. You got to be a basketball player at the end of the day. Make plays happen at that moment, especially. So I'm not sure if this is correct, but was that one of the first games you guys had played in front of fans basically all season? Yeah, that, I think that was the first game that we played in fans in like, I'll say about a year. And they're a lot closer to Syracuse, a lot yeah, closer to Indy. There was Indy. a lot of origin there. Was a lot of origin <laughs> there. We also had our Aztecs in there too. Yeah. So, Talk about the fans a little bit. Like, what do the fans mean to you guys? Oh, the fans, the show, it's, it's nothing like it here in San Diego. Like, we, we're the professional team of San Diego. Um, everybody know what to expect. Come out to VA Hots. We're going to always do a show. We're walking out outside of the basketball, outside the basketball world. Everybody knows who you are. So they show showing love every, time, every day. Yeah, that was I've, – I've been to Kings games because I'm from Sacramento, but I've never been to a college basketball game. Yeah. That game the other night was just the, – the student <laughs> section is crazy. So – you know, going back to March Madness, what was your role coming in? What did you, because you got some playing time in that game. What did you, what was your goal at the end of that? My goal was to just play hard, uh, show everybody what I'm capable of. And that's when you're on the biggest stage. So I wasn't worried about too much points or anything like that, statistics. I was just trying to help get the win, play hard, give energy and effort. Because that's always say that's the only two things you can control as a player. You can't control if you're not always going to fall or anything like that. So you just got to give your energy, your energy uh, attitude, and effort. And that's what I was trying to do. So, obviously, it wasn't the finish you guys wanted. But what did you learn from that in your sophomore year that you've taken into your junior year so far? Um, it was just like I, what I – my biggest takeaway with that was that that's where I want to be. I want to be at Mar March Madness. I want to be showing everybody, like showing the world what I'm capable of. So that just motivated me a lot from there. Like – yeah, I mean, then you head in, obviously, your summer workouts. Just what inspired you to, to grind that hard? Because I saw you working out a lot this summer. Yeah. Just, I know my time coming. I got to be ready. I can't get caught up in a my time coming idea. I got to try to figure out, figure out what's going on now. I got to make it happen now. So now you played your first, second preseason game. We can't talk about UCLA as much as I want to. But, you know, St. Catherine, guys had a huge lead at in the first half. Second half didn't look as great, but tell me just what should SCSU fans expect from this season? They should expect the show. They should expect us to come out there every night, defend, give it our all. If, if like anything goes wrong, just know we're going to come back harder. That Yeah, I mean, that was first half. You came in, brought a lot of energy. That was the big thing. couple offensive rebounds, that was great. Lost – about roughly 50% of your offense from last season in Shackle and Mitchell primarily. You know, besides like Matt Bradley, obviously, third leading score in the Pac-12 last season, what as a team are you guys going to bring that you guys have to this time? Um, 
in order to fill in that gap well, offensively that we lost from that in Jim Shackle, we have to bring in our defense. We got to be big on defense. We got a, a, a larger team in terms of height and weight and things like that. So we got to be able to be in, intimidating. So we got to be the ones that put that nail. So um, I would just say, like, on the defensive end, we got to get all the boards, any any hustle plays to fill in that gap. That's that's what's going to help win the game is the extra plays. Whoever got the most plays at the end of the game is more likely to win that game. So offensive rebounding, defensive rebounding, things like that. Other night, I believe you got your first start of your career, right? Yes, just when coach told you, hey, you're starting Kashad, what was your reaction and how did it feel to go out there having your name heard on the, the big screen? Um, it, it was a blessing. Honestly, it was a blessing, but I was I was ready. I, I would say I wasn't too surprised. I was just ready for the moment and ready to showcase what, I, what I've been working for. That's awesome. So these are just some general questions. Just so, tell me what you love about SCSU. What I love about SCSU, it's never a dull day in San Diego. <laughs> yeah. It, Sunny. Except for today. Like, it was, it was pretty cloudy. Yeah coming from but you come from the bay so you yeah. kind of expect that so then obviously d1 athlete school athletics all that tell me what it's like balancing uh homework and basketball uh homework and basketball you got to be a student athlete here at san diego state um but the way our program is set up we always have that support in our system we got good mentors good academic advisors and things like that so as long as you hold yourself accountable, they'll also hold you accountable. And you're going to get it done. That's, the, that's for sure going to happen. So now in your junior year, what did you wish you knew as a freshman? Now in my junior year, what I, wish, what I wish I knew as a freshman is how important it is to learn every day, to take advantage of every opportunity, get in the gym, learn, watch film. Film, that's a big one. Uh, watch film on all your mistakes and things like that. So you got another simply guy coming down next year, and Miles, uh, you gonna take him under your wing? Of course, got to. He gonna he gonna be great. Miles gonna be great. Miles very for sure. Yeah, all American dad, but played with Malachi Flynn. Is that one of the better players you played with? Tell me a little bit about playing with now an NBA could be a starter on some teams. Malachi Flynn. That's just him. Be him. That's all I really got to say about that. Um, Malachi Flynn in here every day working on his craft every day. Like, that's, things like that just don't happen for any reason. Like, believe it or not, he motivated me. Like, I go home, I see Malachi Flynn in the gym. That, that motivated <laughs> me. Like, okay, I see where he at now. So, now let me get on that, you know? So, just him, seeing him work his magic on the court, seeing the swag that he played with, his confidence, like, it's, it's out this roof, like, did you know instantly when he came in, like, oh, that dude, he can play in the league? Sure, sure. Day in, day out, Malachi proves himself every day. Yeah. So what does it mean for you and your family to see you playing? You're on TV, playing March Madness. What does that mean to you? Uh, to me, it means a lot. In my family eyes, they probably see it as I already made it. Like, you know, like, I'm still striving for greatness, but they, they I'm out of uh, <laughs> my home environment, I'm doing bigger and better things. So I'm already made it in their eyes. And what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to really get them out and let them see the world. They probably are more excited than you are yeah, sometimes. Sure. <laughs> so kind of to wrap it up, I have a podcast called Stuck in the Dream. And I've asked Bobby Jackson, this Coleman Hawk and Miles, who would be your dream teammate? Could be college, NBA, all time. What, who, who would be your dream teammate? Dream teammate. Well, I look at LeBron as the GOAT. I got to be the GOAT. I don't know about that one. That's, that's cool at all. Um, Guy that could throw you some oops, so. He being the open guy, I got to go with Stephen Curry. I know that that got to be my good teammate. So, like, he changed the game. And to be with somebody that changed the game, that, that's wisdom. Plus his personality, like Steph, <laughs> somebody like Steph, like you know, you, you never see Steph Powell. He, he's not arrogant. He got a good head on his shoulders. You no. Know? Yeah, I mean, I've asked Bobby Jackson who the goat was. He said Michael Jordan. So we we don't need to get into that. Yeah. 
Ron is the goat. That's, that's the end of the conversation. Ron is the goat. Uh, I'd like to thank you, Kashad, for coming on for Simply Basketball. It means a lot seeing you out here, going to the games, having fun. Thanks for coming on. Yep.